and welcome to Life at the Laundry Garden. Well, we've had an extremely wet week this week. The downpours have been quite relentless and almost torrential here. And quite a lot of the dahlias have taken a beating, lots of head snapping off and definitely in need of some serious deadheading. At least I didn't need to water them. I've also been very distracted with these little people. <laughs> so I'm out at the moment giving them some playtime and just finding myself doing little odd jobs, which is quite good really. So I've found myself deadheading some lavender that needed sorting and I've got some roses in pots here as well that need some deadheading too. So I'm gonna get on with that now while these little rascals Look at these. <laughs> and Penny's still a puppy, really. She's just over one year old. And Amber loves playing with her. She loves playing with all of them. They're so funny together. <laughs> In these three pots, I've got these gorgeous roses. That I've only planted this year, so this is their first year in here, and they are called Gabriel Oak. And I've got two plants back to back in each pot, and they've done exceptionally well this year. This is classic rain damage where you can see the blotches on the petals. So <laughs> Unfortunately, this rose head is, is well, it's, it's dropping its petals already, you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deadhead it. So I'm going to go to the second leaf node. So this is the first one. And then there's one just underneath here and I'm just going to snip it off and make it look a lot tidier. I mean, you probably don't have to get too fussy at this time of year now because with it being their second flush and what I'm going to do is give them another little tidy in November and then leave them until they drop their leaves through the winter before tackling them again in February. Now I've deadheaded those roses. Puppies are still running riot. I'm trying to keep an eye on them as well. It's going to go through here and I've got some lavender just down here that also needs a pruning and I'll just show you how I'm going to do that too. Here is the lavender. It originally started out as this bit here and it has had lots of babies and seeded along here, which is great. And I keep meaning to dig them up and pop them on, but <laughs> it looks quite nice like this anyway, with puppies trashing it. But they're pretty robust, so I'm, I'm cool with it. Okay, so one of the puppies is missing, so I'm just going to have to check where he's gone. There's you. Oh, there you are. Come on, pup-ups. I don't have names for them, obviously, so I just <laughs> call them pup-ups. <laughs> Before I snip all of this, I'm going to quickly show you how to do one. You can do it the long way, <laughs> which will take a long time, with just a pair of snips, which is, you know, you can go straight down and take them off, or you can use some shears. And what you want to do is you can see where this growth is here, the silvery bit at the base of the flower. And what you want to do is just go to where that is. And it doesn't matter if you accidentally snip some of these bits off, that's fine. What you don't want to do is to go too deep into where the woody stems are. So you can just take it into a little mound, follow the shape round like so and and the shears 
do make light of the job for sure. And there it is. I probably could have done this probably I'd say a month ago because these started to go brown I'd say about three weeks ago and the bees had lost interest in it so but there we go all tidy so I just need to do all the others a lot better. Just need to have a quick tidy up and uh, have a cup of tea. Tomorrow I will take you to the dahlias and show you how I deadhead them and how they're looking at the moment. Hello, it's Saturday now and we have just said goodbye to one of our puppies. He was my favourite. He was just adorable. We'd named him Runty because he was the runt of the litter. I adored him. I, he would be the one I would have kept out of all of them. And he has gone to the most gorgeous family. I couldn't have wished for any anywhere nicer for him to go to. So I know he's going to be absolutely loved there. So we've now just got the one that Tom has called Des. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. We certainly don't want to keep him, but who knows? Right, I'm going to do some daily deadheading, as promised, and I'm going to show you how I do it. It's very, very straightforward, and I'm standing right by them now, so I'll show you. And here they are. I haven't deadheaded them in a few days, so there's, and there's been a bit of rain. So some of them are looking a little bit battered and ready to be sorted out. I've asked Tom to film me. Wish me luck. He'll either chop my head off or he'll forget to press record. <laughs> right, so I have got a little pair of snips. You can use scissors, but these are generally a bit sharper and better to use. I've got a trug and a little jug of water, just in case I want to pick a few as well. So the truck, I'll put the dead heads in. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna demonstrate from this flower. <laughs> okay, have you got this in focus, darling? So here's my nice long flower stem. You can see that this, if we put this one, which is perfect for cutting, and this one where it's all opened up and been happily pollinated by the bees. So this is spent. Now the temptation to do that is quite great, obviously, but then you're left with this straggly stem and nothing's gonna grow from up here. So what we should do is go right the way to the bottom of this stem here where this join is and take it off to there. And then what will happen is we'll get some nice new shoots from down here. Or if you're picking a stem, so this is prime for picking. It's looking gorgeous. I'm going to go all the way down to here. Now I can stop here and I can cut there. Now this one's snapped off here, so I'm gonna take that away. Or what I'm going to do, you can see that there's another join here. I can go even further down again, right the way down to the base here and I can chop it down here as well and then I've got a nice long stem but it's probably not great for going in a vase so really I could take it to there and if it's in, if it's with a lot of other flowers you're not going to see this join at all but I'm, pro I'm probably going to take that off and drop this straight into water so I'll show you another flower that's going to be deadheaded. 
you can see again this is open so I'm going to go all the way down to here now you can see on this one I've already deadheaded it here so I'm going to go down to the next stage which again has already been deadheaded here so I'm actually going to go even further down right the way to the base to this bit here and take it off there and that's going to invigorate it and tidy it a lot at the same time and we'll get some nice long fresh shoots coming from the bottom right i've got a lot more to do thank you darling <laughs> so here are some dahlias and i'm going to first of all show you the cycle of the dahlia so these here are nice new fresh buds and then they go to the next stage where they start to develop more of their petals then if we move to one here you can see then they start to open up and then these petals along here start to fold back and you start to get this beautiful effect especially on these ball varieties so this is absolutely perfect for picking because once you pick them then they do stop opening any further now the point where we need to start deadheading is around this stage where you can see that center has opened up here and it's quite good because the bees will pollinate it and also if you wanted to take seed you could leave that on the stem because it will then drop its all its leaves and you're left with this and then it closes up and then you're left with this cone shape here but I'm not going to take any seeds so this and this and this are spent but I have a little flower coming here so I'm just going to take this off to the base just there I'm also going to take these two back as well so that then I'm left with this flowering stem that's going to come into flower fairly soon so I'll show you one more time so we can see this one has dropped all of its petals almost so we go down to here and snip it just there and then we've got these two coming now you can if you're picking so for instance if I want to pick this one and even though there are some that are about to flower don't worry about that because you can go as low down as you want you can take it right down but always make sure even when you're picking that you go down to the base to where there's a join and two more flower heads coming up but the longer the stem you want the lower you cut so i can cut this one further down but this one is just it's it's good for picking but I'd be more inclined, you put these two side by side, I'd be more inclined to pick this one because it's still slightly tighter here. So I'm quite happy to take that and go further down so I get a longer stem and snip it there. And I've got a nice long stem. And it's not quite closed underneath here, which is great. I only started growing this one last year and it's called no it wasn't last year actually it was I think it was the year before and it's called Zundert Mystery Fox and it is probably one of my favorites because of its nice compact ball shape and it has nice long stems and its color it's beautiful what color would you describe it as darling brick orange would you say it's glorious flame yeah, it's almost like a flame colour because it has a tiny tinge on the edges of sort of a creamy colour. It's just stunning and it goes with a lot of other colours. It's beautiful. Sort of a kiss of autumn.
I remember when I very, very first started growing dahlias and I was so reluctant to keep deadheading them. And sometimes you'd be deadheading flowers that you think are not to be deadheaded because you think that's it, you're gonna cut them and they're not gonna come back. But the more and more I got used to these beautiful flowers and the more I kept deadheading them and feeding them, the more they kept coming and the more I fell in love with them. Now I'm, I'm no expert and I do hope what I've shown you today, how I do it and how I've learned to do it over the years has been really helpful to you. Feel free to drop me a comment. I will do my best to answer any questions if, you, if there's anything I've missed out on. Right, well, I'm going to get on with what I've just shown you and get as much done as I possibly can before the heavens open. I honestly think it might rain. And if it doesn't rain, it's gonna be dark soon. So I'd like to say a big thank you for watching and I look forward to sharing with you next week what tulips I've chosen to be planting in the garden and where I'm going to be planting them. So I'll see you next time. Bye.